بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سالار خان ہیر اور آج ہم نے کیا ہے ہم نے سالو کیا ہے ہم نے سالو کیا ہے ہم نے سالو کیا ہے اور یہ سالو کیا ہے اور یہ سالو کیا ہے اور یہ سالو کیا ہے So our own assignment, okay? We are given the input, we are given the impulse response and we are asked to find the discrete time convolution. This is question number one. This is question number one. So what do you have? Discrete time convolution, you know very well that we are asked to find out y of n and y of n is equal to summation k running from negative infinity to positive infinity x of k h of n minus k and now you know the properties of convolution as well so you can do it by any other method as well if you want to take the commutative property let's say talking of the simplest you can take you can shift x of k and then you can make this constant but i would go with the same procedure i would be taking my x of n constant and i would be shifting h of n fine so first of all the first step is what the first step is of course to uh, to draw x of k so x of k would be the same thing so let me replace it over here directly this is my x of k right then you have an h of k so let's say this is my h of k as well so if this is my x of k h of k now the next thing that i need is an h of uh, minus k right so if i need an h of minus k so it would be something like this if this is my k axis and now this would also be my k axis and this would also be my k axis so what would i have it is a 0 1 2 3 so now it would come to a 0 negative 1 negative 2 and negative 3 and this value is 2 the value is 2 and at 1 this is 0 and so on at the right side and similarly at negative 4 it is 0 and so on at the left side so this is your h of minus k this would be my h of minus k the next thing that i need is h of n minus k so i would draw it with the green color so if i have it like this let's say this is my k axis so h of n minus k would be what let's say first for uh, i draw h of n minus k and this is for n the value of n is less than zero so which means you would have to shift it n units towards the left the leftmost point would be point n so if this is zero now this is point n fine so this is one two three four so two three and four so it goes from n to n minus one n minus two n minus three and at n minus 4 it is 0 back and similarly over here at n plus 1 it is also 0 and this is the case fine the value is 2 now what do you have you have the product so let's see if i draw the y of k axis so if i have y of n so y of n would be the summation for k running from negative infinity to positive infinity. So have a look. For, uh, y of n is what? It is x of k. It is x of k. So x of k exists at 0, 1, 2, 3, which is 1. And then it's 0, right? And it is multiplied with an h of n minus k of course the summation you write it yourself so h of n minus k exists somewhere over here that is 0 at n plus 1 and then at n it exists so 1 2 3 and 4 and this value is 2 so have a look we don't have any overlap for the value of n less than 0 so i can write that my y of n is equal to 0 when for n less than 0 fine so this is my first case now for the value of n greater than or equal to zero so you can have it like this if this is my k axis you have your h of n minus k and this if this is for n greater than or equal to zero so now this would be at the other side so let's say if this is zero so you have it somewhere over here let's say one two three and four this is n Right, and this would be n minus 4. 
So it would be something like this, but now we would have to, uh, it would exist at each and every interval. So now I would have to do it stepwise, which means that let's say first I take n is equal to 0, okay? So n is equal to 0, let's say I take, so this would be over here, 0. Uh, let it be, let it be. Let it be. If I, or uh, let that portion also be over there. Now if my n is equal to 0, if this is my h of n minus k, right, for n is equal to 0. So what would be the case? The final point would be over here at 0. 1, right, then 2, then 3, then 4. So it would be 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, right? Then negative 3, this would be 2. And now what do you have? You have to multiply it with your x of k. So you have to multiply it with your x of k. So what do you have? x of k exists at only 0. So at 0 only it exists. Uh, well over here it exists as well. But the, I think I mean to say is that the overlap would only exist at, at 0. So this is 1, that is uh, 2. What do you have? You have 2 1s or 2. So y of 1 I would write over here is equal, y of 0 is equal to 2 y of 0 is equal to 2, right? Isn't it like this? Let me check. y of 0 is equal to, yes, it's fine. Now, n is equal to 1. So if n is equal to 1, let me draw it with a green color. If n is equal to 1, so I will draw it over here, h of n minus k for n equal to 1, this is the k axis. So n equal to 1 means the final point would be at 1 which would be like this, fine, and then at 0 as well, and then at negative 1, and finally at negative 2, and this would be 2, right? And this is multiplied with your x of k. Uh, and x of k exists at 0, it exists at 1, at 2, and at 3. And this value is 1. So have a look. Now what do you have? The product would exist and you have the summation as well of course. So if you have the summation as well which means that you have to uh, sum these two values. So which means that my y of 0 would be equal to uh, x of 0 into h of this thing. You do your mathematics yourself. So which means this would be a 2 multiply 1 would be for this one and plus 2 multiply 1 would be for this one, so which means that y of 1 would be equal to 4. y of 1 would be equal to 4. This is the case. Now for n equal to 2, so let's say let's say this is the case. If this is my k axis, h of n minus k, or I would write a 2 minus k over here. For n equal to 2, right? This is your h of 1. 1 minus k and this is simply for h of minus k. So now for n equal to 2 you have what? The, the, the rightmost will be at 2, okay? So this is 1, this is 2, this is 3 and this is 4. So which means this would be 1, this would be 0, this would be negative 1. Fine. So now what would be the case? Uh, it would be multiplied with an x of k, x of k. So what would you have? x of k is what? It's existing as a 0, 1, 2, and 3 but the overlap is only at the 3 points so what do you do you have to sum them all together 2 multiply 1 2 multiply 1 plus 2 multiply 1 so which means that y of 2 would come out to be 8 y of 2 would come out to be 8 fine now now if you have it again uh, for n equal to 3 so what would be the case if this is my k axis, you have h of n minus 3, no sorry, 3 minus k. You have a 3 minus k, this is basically for n equal to 3 I'm talking about. So you have it at 3, 2, 1 and 0. So this is 2 and this is multiplied with an x of k, of course, and then the summation as well. So what do you have? x of k is at 0, 1, 2 and 3 as well. So this would be all 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. So this would be 10. y of 4, 6, 8. 8, 8. 
This is 6, okay? This is 6. Oh. Y of 2 is 6, isn't it? Yes, and this would be 8 now. Y of 3 is 8. Y of 3 is 8. Do you want me to continue? Let's say I continue. So, uh, n equal to 4. n equal to 4, wait a minute. Or oh, let it be 4, 5, 6, 7, let it be over here. n equal to 4 would be what? h of 4 minus k. So the final point would be at, at 4, right? So you have 4, 3, 2, 1. And it is multiplied with an x of k and x of k is at existing at 0, 1, 2 and 3. So which means that now you have missed one point. One point is not going to be multiplied. So it would be uh, 2 plus 2 plus 2 which is 6. So y of 4 would now be equal to 6. Of course we have the summation over here. And equal to 5. If this is my k axis for n equal to 5, you have an h of 5 minus k. Uh, so this would be at 5, 4, 3, and 2. So this would be till 2, and it's being multiplied with an x of k, which is existing at a 0, 1, 2, and 3. So what do you have? Only two points. So again, what do you have? Two plus two. So which would be that y of five is equal to four. Fine. Now y of six and y of seven. So let me remove the uh, some over here. Okay. Let me remove this place. Okay. So what do we have next? The next is for n equal to 6. So if my, uh, and, and the cloth was wet, the cloth was wet. So let me first dry it. Okay, now it's fine. So now for n equal to 6, what do I have? Uh, this would be my k axis. The final would lie at 6, 5, 4 and 3. So this is my h of uh, 6 minus k and this is being multiplied with x of k which exists at 0, 1, 2 and 3 and, and of course you have to sum them up so it's only being multi overlapping at one point so y of uh, 6 is equal to what? y of 6 is equal to 2. y of 7. y of 7 now. So for n equal to 7, what do you have? Let's say this is my k axis again, n equal to 7, h of 7 minus k. This would be 7, 6, 5, and 4. So this is point 4, right? And x of k exists where at 0 1 2 and 3 so this finishes at 3 so which means again you don't have any overlap so now you shift it further you have a 0 so this would be 0 y of 7 is 0 and y of n is equal to 0 for n greater than 7 or if you write n equal over here but I have mentioned so no problem so this is my final answer if you want me to draw the graph so if this is my n axis this is my y of n axis so what do I have y of 0 is 0 y of it's 0 for n less than 0 no for 0 it's 2 for 0 it's 2 for for negative value it is 0 right for 1 is 4, for 1 is 4, for 2 it is 6, for 2 it is 6, for 3 it is 8, 
uh, for 4 it is 6 again for 5 it is 4 again for 6 it is 2 again and then at 7 it becomes 0 and it says 0 afterward and this is the solution to the first question so I think it was a little boring because it was longer and I was not keeping you guys interactive I did not have the eye contact so I'm sorry okay so this is the first question now we have another question so first I would like to remove this okay Okay, question number two. Again, you are given an x of t. If this is my t, what do I have? x of t is something like this. If this is my x of t axis, so you have an exponential function. This exists, starts at 1. The amplitude is 1. And it is given by an exponential of negative t minus 1 multiplied a u of t minus 1. And the impulse response that is h of t is also given. And how is it? So if this is my h of t, how is it? It is starting at a negative 1 and it stays 1. Which means this is a u of t plus 1. This is u of t plus 1 and now the discrete, the, the continuous time convolution is asked. So now for continuous time convolution what do you have? You know the equation y of t is now the integration negative infinity to infinity x of tau h of t minus tau and this is integrated with respect to a tau. So now what do I have? First of all, I have to change the variables. So let's say I change it over here. If this becomes my tau, this becomes my tau, this becomes my tau, and this becomes my tau. Similarly, over here, this would become tau, this would become tau, and this would become tau. Now you need x of tau, you need an h of t minus tau. So first you need an h of minus tau, right? So if I draw my h of minus tau over here, so how would it be? This is my tau axis, so it would be like this. So it would be a reflection about the y axis, so it would be like this, fine. Now you need an h of t minus tau. So uh, again we have two cases. So if you draw it, let's suppose over here, uh, let me draw it with the green color. Uh, if I have it like this, this is my tau axis. And if you have it over here, is this axis. So if you draw the h of, not like this, h of t minus tau, you draw. So h of t minus tau, if for t less than 0, so it would be something like this, right? This point would be t plus 1. Right? And what have they shown is that t is less than 0 or t plus 1 is less than 1. The first thing is, the basic thing is that t plus 1 is less than 1. If you shift it on the other side, of course, t less than 0. Fine? So this is the case. And then it is, it has to be multiplied with an x of tau. So x of tau would be like this. So I will look, it is out of no reach. So my y of t becomes 0 for t less than 0. Fine. Now for t plus 1 greater than 1. So which means t greater than or equal to 0. So if you have for t greater than or equal to 0, what would be the case? I have it over here. If you have it for t greater than or equal to 0, let's say this is my tau axis and this is now h of t minus tau for t uh, t plus 1 is greater than 1 
or you can say that t is greater than or equal to 0. So you would have it like this. This would be your t plus 1 point and, 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 and what? Yes, this is it and it has to be multiplied with an x of t with an x of tau. Of course the integration would be there. So have a look. Where would it exist? The overlap. Where does the overlap exist? So I would say what? That my y of t is equal to integrating from negative infinity to infinity x of tau h of t minus tau d tau. This is now equal to where does the overlap occur? So it would occur from 1 to t plus 1. So 1 to t plus 1. What is the function? It's exponential of negative t plus 1 multiplied with a with h of t minus tau which is u of t minus 1 so the value is 1 so you don't need to write it okay and then you have it with respect to tau. Now this integration I don't know how to solve it. Okay let's suppose this to, a, to some dummy variable tau dash. Let's say say oh, this is a t minus 1 okay yes so this is a tau minus 1 so say tau minus 1 is equal to let's say let's say t dash okay so what would you have my y of t would come out to be exponential of negative t dash upon negative 1 and the limits are 1 and t plus 1 so now what would you have uh, you would have a negative exponential of and t dash so put back t dash which is tau minus 1 and then uh, put the values now the values are t plus 1 and 1 so you put them yourself okay or oh, let me do it so what do you have uh, a negative exponential, let's say negative is taken outside, so negative exponential of uh, t plus 1 minus 1 would be t and then you have a minus exponential of you put t equal to 1, 1 minus 1 would be 0, right? So exponential to the power is, uh, 0 would be 1 and then you would have what? A 1 minus, a 1 minus exponential of 1 minus exponential of t and this should be minus t yes this should be minus t why because uh, you know when I did it correct okay well I did it very scary I was very scary uh, when doing this but uh, I did a mistake somewhere you know this should be minus t so if this is a uh, so you have a negative over here as well you have a negative over here right so you have a negative over here and then you would do it yourself so you would get uh, maybe a negative over here well I don't know this fine so you put a t plus 1 here so this would come a negative t right and you put the next image so, so this is fine this is fine I've got the correct answer this is my answer this is my answer and y of t is equal to this thing for t greater than or equal to 0 so I could write it I could write it directly that my y of t is equal to 1 minus exponential of negative t multiply with a u of t for all values of t and if you want me to to draw the graph of it so if this is my t axis this is my y of t axis so I would take the red color for it and what do I have? This would be some sort of a function line. This, where this isomptote would represent a 1. And how is that? If this tends to infinity, if the minus infinity would be 0. So exponential to the power 0 uh, would be 1. No, exponential to the power negative. Negative infinity would be 0. Exponential to the power negative infinity would be 0, right? So 1 minus 0 would be 1. So this is it. So this was my assignment number two. That's all about this video. See you in the next lecture, maybe with some more solutions. Till then, take care of yourselves and everyone around and do remember me in your prayers. 
Goodbye.